Everybody, it's Ja'Kayla Carr, and you're tuned in to Leah's Lemonade. Well, I wish I could give you the tea, but mine's just a little bit tart, and that's why it's called Leah's Lemonade. And I'm excited because I have one of the gospel greats with me, uh, Ja'Kaitlyn Carr. I mean, Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, radio host, actress, uh, beauty mogul. Let's get into it, sis. You're doing it all right now. How are you? (laughs) I'm excellent. How are you? I'm doing well. Really excited to talk to you because I get excited to talk to the new generation of gospel. Um, it's a lot of differences between some of us who grew up in church and the artists that are, you know, before us and then ones like you who are leading the charge. So uh, super excited to talk to you and especially about your new upcoming album. Thank you. <laughs> um, but first, I would like to start out by saying, sis, you always be beat. And when uh, I went to social media and found out that you were doing it yourself, I said, now, Miss Carr, come on. <laughs> yes, I, I love makeup. And so when I'm out at concerts and stuff like that, only time I don't do it is like for my photo shoots, video shoots, award shows. I don't like to deal with, deal with the hustle and bustle of all that. But anything outside of that, yes, I, I do it. <laughs> Girl, it looks so good. And I mean, then Thank there's you. like a natural succession to your beauty line, right? Like you Thank have you. fragrances, you have um, your skincare, you, you're going to do hair products. Like talk to me about the culmination of that, like especially growing up in the church. Because I feel like a lot of times, you know, with makeup, I felt like when we were growing up, it was like, you too grown, you look too grown. So like, how did you get into the, the beauty uh, at such a young age? Well, I've always loved all things beauty. It was just that I had to get to a certain age where I could wear makeup. <laughs> that was my only thing. <laughs> um, then, and baby, when my daddy said, I'm going to take you to the makeup style. Yes. <laughs> baby, that's all he had to say. It was on from there. Um, so that was just my only only reservation was my age. Because, you know, I've, I've started seeing it at five and um. <laughs> 13 when I started speaking and that's when things took off for me and so I was a little girl basically yeah, you know yeah. um now my little sister she had I'm like child when I was your age I couldn't even what? think about a lash what are okay. we doing? <laughs> but yes yeah you have to walk for her to cr- you have to uh, crawl for her to walk okay exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay so let's talk about this new album it's coming out October 20th Jacqueline self-titled and I've seen little clips you posted on social media about naming the album after yourself and kind of being a representation of you and your transition through music and kind of how this music is more of a personal touch than maybe some of your previous albums um I think Christian gospel black gospel particularly is changing a lot you know what I mean I think um CCM is driving a lot of the influence in gospel these days so and I've seen you kind of experiment with even some of those artists you have stuff with elevation music and stuff like that so tell me about how this project is going to be different than what your fans have probably seen from you in the past well so we I've done different features um that for what they the artists you know and it was different from what I'm what I was used to doing not that it wasn't in me it's just that I always have to do what God is telling me to do in each season of my life Mm -hmm. um but with this album it's so it's been four years since I recorded the album and within that time period that's when God just began to tell me like okay that more that I put in you now it's time for you to let it show now it's time for you to let it show through the album and be okay with that and Mm -hmm. the thing about it is what really made me start like trying to hear from him too was because (laughs) it was different songs with different styles that he was giving like my always like we're taking you to the Caribbean Jamaica (laughs) man we're going there and I'm like wait are you sure like this is a little different people Da, 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 da. And like, wait a minute, you can't allow yourself or people to hold you to what you've already done. Just yeah. because traditional is your foundation, that doesn't mean that's what you will always do. Now, I do still have come your on, church is come on. Come on. that traditional sound because <laughs> maybe we weren't doing an album without it, right? Um, I still have that on the album, it's just that also, um, expanding the reach even more musically, uh, with different styles. You have gospel hip hop on here, it's, it's a few things, of course. And so, I'm excited about it. You get a little taste of Jacqueline, I like to call it, um, the evolution, you know, when it comes to my music and stuff like that. 
Yeah, and I, I think, you know, there's there's a moment where you kind of decide as an artist, right? Because again, you know, of course you're doing this for the kingdom, but you're also an artist, right? And creativity and how you flow is expressive in so many different ways, especially as you age, right? Because right. I think that one thing millennials do that are a little bit different than our parents is we're starting to experience God differently. Right? Like it's just mm -hmm. a totally different ball game. Church right. is different. Right. The way we approach worship, the way we approach right. Everything has just changed. Yeah. So how do you as a young artist coming up in this, who grew up in those traditional roots, have a traditional voice, have put out that music, but now you're deviating in a space where it's like, there's variety and there's a different way to like, yeah. not to the masses. So how do you deal with that? Like, I guess, confliction. Two things for me, number one, just because it doesn't sound the same, that doesn't mean it ain't God. Mm. That's first thing yeah. first. Come on, let's talk. Um, and then number two, my creativity is not the same for every album, for every level, every season. You know what I mean? Like, you, again, it goes back to you not allowing yourself or even others hold you back to your last situation because you're not there anymore. But again, like I said, you have some people got used in CCM. You have gospel rap, gospel jazz. Yeah, I even hear a go gospel country. Um, you know what I mean? And so just because it's different, that doesn't mean God isn't in it. Mm -hmm. um, the message, as long as the message is the same, and that's what I wanted to do with this album too. Y'all know I like to sing about something. Okay, mm -hmm. so I didn't want to just be bopping and stuff and there's no substance <laughs> with the lyrics and all of that. Like the message is still the same. It's just packaged differently every now and then. Every other track on that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I know you're big on TikTok. Uh, have you been seeing that these Christian clubs have been popping up all over the country where people are like using an alternative to church? Like people are going and it's like a club, it's like a party. Like you get dressed, they playing gospel, they playing like gospel hip hop, like hip hop gospel artists are performing. What do you think about that? Because I think millennials are really trying to find ways to reach God, not in the four walls of the church as much. So what are your thoughts on things like that? Those alternative measures, if you will. I'm not opposed to it. He who wins souls, you're wise. You got to be wise about it. And you have some people who probably won't come into church, but they'll go to church by coming to something like that. You know, it's like taking baby steps, especially for some, especially for someone that God, this God thing is new to them. You know what I mean? And so um, I'm not against it as long as it's strictly for that, you know, and, and no additional stuff. Cause you know how the devil try to come in, try to taint stuff through whatever mm -hmm. that, but um, I'm not against that at all. I feel like if you're winning souls, win them how God tells you to win them. Yeah. 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 And you got to go you know, outside of the four walls for sure. And also uh, want to point out that you will be on the Dove Awards as well as on the day your album drops. So I don't know if you I know, know right? more about that. Girl, I didn't even put the two and two together until about two weeks ago. <laughs> it was like, yeah, your album dropped the same week. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, I actually be there with my sister Blanca. We did New Day. We were, we were nominated for New Day and we're performing New Day as well. Um, and like you said, my album comes out that week. So it's a pretty big week for me. And I'm very, very excited. I'm like sitting at the edge of my seats ready. Because you know how like when you have something you've been working on and you're ready to get it out, it's that feeling. And then when it's finally out, it's like this relief that comes over you. That's what I'm ready for. <laughs> I feel like it's the equivalent of the first day of school when you have that outfit you knew you was going to kill on. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> looking out on the bed and you like looking at it and it's looking at you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be exciting. Um, now let's talk about you and your career in general because you've been expanding. You were actually in Praise This with Chloe Bailey, Drewski, Corinne Hawthorne. What was that experience like? Because I saw, I feel like your fans saw you in a totally different way, you know, in the character you were portraying. It was really, really good. So anyone who knows me knows that my favorite movie is Sister Act. Both of them, but if I had to choose, it'd be number two. Oh, um, oh, and oh, yes, oh, it, it literally felt like I was in the Sister Act movie. Um, and the cast was amazing. Uh, my character was Kiki. There were so many people hitting me up. Um, you know, just saying how they can relate to the, to the character, you know what I'm saying? I saw something that said, I'm classy, I love the Lord, but you know. 
you know. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, yes, at the end of the day, it was so good. I didn't have to compromise. I didn't have to do anything crazy. I was just simply showing personality. A uh, personality. It was also another way for people to see my personality because when I'm on stage or anything like that, it's go time. I take what I do very seriously. But they don't know. I love to have fun. I love to laugh. I come from a very comical family. All of that. So I was able to show all of that in the movie. Yeah, absolutely. And and fans definitely gave a good reception to the movie. Um, also, speaking of some of your accolades, you were recently inducted into the Women's Songwriter Hall of Fame. How mm -hmm. did that feel? Because I know, you know, a lot of times I feel like when it comes to these types of things, gospel artists don't always get their 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 roses. So how did it yeah. feel like a young woman in gospel being honored with that? It feels good. And I can look at it from different ways. First of all, just like you said, being a young woman and receiving something as, as such, it's just like very humbling. And then also to know that these are my songs, like wrote all of these songs, all, all of these songs are written in house. God has just been faithful. And so, um, and it's a blessing to know how people have been inspired. I always look at it anytime there's a nomination, there's an award, anything of that sort. It just shows me how God has allowed my, how far my reach is and how people are blessed. And it's always a mission accomplished for me because when I can bless you, it blesses me. Yeah, absolutely. And on that same track of you writing your own songs, you're an independent gospel artist, but you also work in a music label with your family. So talk to me about, you know, why you wanted to kind of bridge that gap, because I know when you were younger, you were actually trying to get signed. Your dad was trying to get you signed and it just didn't work out that way. So talk to me about like creating your own label and like the expectation you have now that you're in the seat to accept artists versus when you were trying and you being independent yourself. Yeah, um, to speak on that, the, the, the thing where God would allow it to happen, like he literally would not allow it to happen, um, you know, us to sign with anyone. And it was, I think at the time, because we were, he raised me during a time where people felt like you had to hurt, have certain things, um, you know, or whatever. And don't get me wrong, I think record labels are very great for who, whosoever journey is for, because they're there for a reason. You just need to read your contracts. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But as for me and my journey, <laughs> that he just didn't want us to go that route. And I see why now, you know, is it was number one so that we can put our trust in him solely. Um, and then number two, so that people can see what happens when you take the limits off of God. You know, I, according to natural circumstances, you're supposed to have this. But what if you don't have that? Mm -hmm. That's when the supernatural kicks in. And that's what he did for me. Now, as as it, when it comes to like other artists now, I'm very I'm so compassionate. I'm so compassionate towards him because I know what it feels like to get a no. You know what I mean? I know what it feels like to be, oh, you're too young. You ain't been mm -hmm. through enough. You ain't did this. You ain't been out there long enough. Like, I know what that feels like. But then my mind will go back to, oh, well, what about um Jeremiah? <laughs> mm -hmm. What about David? What about, the, you know what I'm saying? I never heard anytime you're the, if you're the chosen, you're just the chosen. Mm -hmm. And so that's what um I'm looking for, you know, and my heart is very compassionate towards if you have it, you just have it. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to go back to when you were starting out. I mean, you've been doing this since you were five years old. I mean, you were kind of just thrusted into this. But was there ever a point in time growing up, especially when you're getting constant no's like that, right? Because I hear a lot of R&B artists, talk, Coco Jones, example, she wanted to do gospel thing. Her mama thought it was going to be the gospel route and they were not getting the yeses, right? So was there ever a point where you were like, hmm, maybe this gospel thing, like I wanna do R&B or I wanna do some other type of genre. Was there ever a point where you were like, I don't know about this? Oh girl, no. <laughs> I was literally just telling someone a few a few ago that um, I feel like if I was to sing, for example, an R&B song, child, in there, I'm gonna say, thank you, Jesus. It's just gonna come out. <laughs> it's just gonna come out without me even knowing. Or whatever, um, but I just knew that this was, it's just all about, uh, for me, it was just all about being patient and trusting God. It's not going to come easy for either one of us. Not going to come easy for you. Now, you do have certain things that we had to do then that you don't quite have to do now, yeah. or people before me had to do that I didn't have to do. It's just a matter, again, of you just feeling like it's not going to fall in your lap. 
you got to work, you got to push, you got to fight for it. And most importantly, you got to trust God. So no, I never wanted to do anything outside of gospel, maybe inspirational here and there, where it's not so much God, 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 because again, so you got to be wise to draw souls. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and again, I think, you know, I, I was able to get a little sneak peek of the album. Um, so I think people will definitely be able to hear the versatility of your gift and kind of how you're coming in this new season uh, of this new album. Um, I also wanted to ask, you know, growing up in the church, being in this <laughs> image so quickly, having so many people always kind of eyeing you or watching you was there a struggle that you had to overcome growing up uh, in front of the world or in front of the church? Because I feel like, you know, secular artists they get judged but i feel like that church judgment it hit a little different so is there anything that you've had to overcome just like growing up in this uh gospel spotlight um just pretty much people or certain not every, <clears throat> excuse me girl um not everyone but some people embracing the grown J.K. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm not a little, I started out as a little girl, but I'm just a little girl anymore. Yeah. Um, and just understanding that there are certain things that are going to change. Um, but I feel like as long as I'm not offending God and it's not a threat to my destiny and who I was created to be, then I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Everybody is allowed room to grow. Everyone is allowed room to um, to to just evolve. And that's what I've been doing. And I've been doing it unapologetically because, yeah, yeah, it's, it, it happens. It's right. right. <laughs> it's and right. You know, there, there is a differentiation. I think everybody, you know, some people see you as a little Jacqueline and it's like, baby, it's grown Jacqueline. What y'all mean? Yeah. What y mean? And that's why I said some people, because it's not everybody. It's just some people. But I, even though, I, listen, I'm like, get with it or get left. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's literally, yeah, and it just it just comes with, with the territory of, like, exactly. so many people feeling like they have their hands in watching you grow. Yeah, like, no. <laughs> yeah, but no. <laughs> yeah, but immediately, no. Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay, Um. so I want to talk to you about this, because I actually had a conversation uh, with Kiki Sheard not too long ago about, like, you know, dating relationships in the church and, you know, kind of how old church missed the mark a lot about conversations about sex conversations about you know relationships in general I think especially at least Christian women feeling a little in a little weird place um you've had one public relationship but ultimately do you what do you feel about dating as a millennial and a gospel artist in this world right now like what is that like for you are you is it like Ugh, yeah I'm gonna be married <laughs> So we go, you know, I listen, the single life is not my, my is not my portion. <laughs> it is not my portion. And, um, but whenever, you know, God chooses to do that for me, but, um, and of course I embrace everywhere that I am, but that's my, my goal for me. It's just, I don't, I don't like to waste my time. Um, I, sometimes I can see it from afar off. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, like that's that's just me. Of course, we have our certain relationships that are part of our growing yeah. process that teaches us lessons and all of that. But I'm like, all right, God. <laughs> Wrap this Unless up. I need another one, I don't need another lesson. <laughs> yeah, I don't got <laughs> you no know? Like, so I'm just, yeah, I've just been in that place of just waiting for you know, what, what is for me and all of that. And, and I'm looking forward to it. And I know it's going to be beautiful. Um, where, whatever, whenever God chooses to do it for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, put a little oil on there for me too. Cause listen, when, listen. Comes, when you sing it, it goes to his ears. Oh, yes. <laughs> pour it over the whole zoom, pour it over the whole <laughs> husband's husband's husband. <laughs> hey, man. Well, listen, I know you're busy. You got a lot of other people to talk to. So I want to thank you. Let everybody know again about the album. Also shout out to you being a radio sister as well. Uh, yeah. you know, we love women in radio. Um, <laughs> let everybody know again where they can follow you, keep up with you. And then any information about the album. Yeah, sure. You can follow me on all of my social social media platforms. I made it easy for you. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, under my name, at Jekaylyn Carr, J-E-K-A-L-Y-N-C-A-R-R with the blue check mark. If it does not have the blue check mark, it is not me, okay? 
Um, the album, Jekaylin, drops October 20th. You can get it anywhere your music uh, is, whether purchased or streamed, it's there. Um, and I look forward to how you guys love it. The tags, all that, like, it means a lot to me again, like I said, to know that I'm blessing you, it blesses me. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Excited to hear this project. I think people are really going to love it. Proud of you as always. Congratulations for all thank your you. success. And I thank you for coming by the Lemonade Stand. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, Lemonade Stand, grab a cup, throw it back, and sip on all of that. <laughs>